got to save our environmental fretting for these once every decade decisions that lock us into emissions. And so think of it as the infrastructure of your life. Floods, droughts and fires. Scientists say the data shows climate change is contributing to the extreme weather we've seen in recent months. For decades, researchers have argued the global temperature rise must be kept below 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius, and to do that, we must reduce carbon emissions. But inventor and entrepreneur Sol Griffith says instead of waiting for governments and companies to make changes, it's everyday individuals who can make the biggest difference. Why are you focusing on decarbonising homes instead of targeting oil companies? I think it's a very convenient blame game that enables us to think that the fossil fuel companies are the problem. Why should we differentiate it all between the energy company and then the companies that make the machines that use that energy that we enjoy? And so I think if we all believe that we're a little bit complicit, then that helps us get to, I think, a healthier place with a bit less blame. We're all trying to figure this out together. That's a healthier position than it's, it's the coal's fault, it's natural gas's fault. The climate change and global warming discussion can be divisive and overwhelming. Sol wants to change that by breaking the information down to help people understand the important role their purchasing decisions make. I'm trying to find stories and narratives and information that helps us understand what we all have to do. So 42% of emissions in the US are determined by choices that are made around the kitchen table in American households. To reach the people, Sol has co-founded Rewiring America, an advocacy group that wants to electrify everything using renewable energy and keep global warming to below two degrees. That might seem counterintuitive when a lot of our electricity comes from fossil fuels, including coal and gas. One of the narratives in the public arena is that going green will cost you more. Instead, the advocacy group wants to focus on what households stand to gain. If we get solar to a dollar a watt, batteries installed in cars and in homes about $100 a kilowatt hour, cost parity for electric vehicles with internal combustion engines, and heat pumps with a coefficient of performance of three, that means you get three units of heat for one unit of electricity. All of those things look like they'll be true by about 2024, 2025 in the US, and that would save the average American household $2,500 a year, $2,500 a year. So. We are on the cusp of this opportunity to be solving these problems economically. And we need to broadcast that message to politicians in particular, because we have a whole bunch of politicians that are lobbied by the fossil fuel industry. Right now, natural gas is cheaper, but they are cynically exploiting the fact that, that might just barely maybe be true today, but it won't be true in 2025. But instead of waiting for the politicians to do something, Sol wants to help the public focus on where they can make the biggest CO2 reductions. So I think we need to move away from the, being incapacitated in the supermarket aisle of which can of tuna is the least objectionable. And we need to realise that we've got to save our environmental fretting for these once every decade decisions that lock us into emissions. And so think of it as the infrastructure of your life. As consumers, if we make the right choices and we make the demand, that builds the market. And if as voters, we demand of our governments that they help make those industries the cheapest and they, they stop subsidies for fossil fuels and they start to help build these markets for these solutions, then we have very concrete action that is really will be impactful and we know a pathway forward. To keep to our climate targets, every machine that uses fossil fuels today must be replaced with machines that run on green energy. So there's no luxury to only think about supply. We have to think about supply and demand. There's a, a, a few millions of big machines over here that are controlled by big companies. And there's a few billions of small machines over here that are controlled by hundreds of millions of households. And they need to decarbonize in concert. And that's where the politicians must play their part. Sol also founded R&D company Other Lab, which helps government agencies and Fortune 500 companies understand energy infrastructure so they can build transformational tech. So how can you scale it up? Well, we just have to do it. Um, 
Yeah, the statistic in the US is interesting. Only 40% of cars go to sleep at night within 20 feet or, you know, six meters of an electrical outlet. So there's not enough plugs. So we need plugs, we need electric cars, we need solar on the roof, we need solar and wind out there industrially. We need to tie it all together. We need all of these pieces. To help build a market, some governments are providing subsidies for more renewable products to achieve pay parity with existing options. But companies also need support to manufacture enough to satisfy demand. There needs to be a fundamental shift in thinking on how we power our lives. That means changing such things as the regulatory environment, so green solutions are easily accessible and affordable. The rules and the laws in every segment of our life have been written for a fossil fuel world. So that manifests as you know setbacks that are too big that limit the size of the solar you can put on your roof. It means extra permitting that increases the cost of a battery on your side of the house, etc., etc., etc. So we are all about lowering the regulatory costs and the regulatory burden for the solution technologies. We are advocating for the lowest cost financing. So the challenge for these renewable technologies is not that they will be cheaper in the future. Everyone largely agrees they will be. Solar and wind are very cheap. The problem is that the upfront cost is higher. So the machine itself costs more in the beginning, but then the energy is very cheap, as opposed to fossil fuels, where the machine is very cheap in the beginning, but the fuels are expensive. We are trying in the US to advocate for policies that look like the US federal government stepping in to make sure that very low cost credit and financing is available to all households to purchase these pieces of infrastructure. And then lastly, we're trying to build an industrial coalition that will sign up to commit to increasing the production of all of these machines so that we can be producing these machines that are the solutions at the speed we need to, to solve the climate crisis. Sol says the message is getting through to US politicians. This year, President Biden pledged to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least 50% by 2030. And Democrats introduced a bill called the Climate Leadership and Environmental Future Act, or CLEAN, which requires 80% clean electricity by 2030 and 100% by 2035. It also sets a goal of a fully decarbonised economy by 2050. Border tariffs could also make a difference. The European Union is proposing this for imported goods based on the carbon content. But some countries will need more encouragement and support if they are to play their part in reducing emissions. It is certainly true, however, the majority of the emissions in the future will be emissions from the large populous Asian countries. So India, Thailand, Indonesia, China, Malaysia, Africa, what happens there and what how they set their trajectory for decarbonizing has an enormous influence. You've got to look through a lot of negative news stories, but there's a few positive news stories that these things are moving in the right direction. China is turning it around. India won't go nearly as much coal as they think. The economics of solar and wind are only going to get better and better, as it will be with nuclear. So I think there's reason to hope that even if in the short term these countries are not making great decisions, that the pure economics of it will save us here. Sol says the solutions won't be perfect. We'll still need certain carbon creating products and materials in industry. But we must keep trying to do better and fast, or misinformation will derail our efforts for a cleaner, healthier planet. We shouldn't let these concerns uh, slow us down and remember that there are very cynical, slightly evil people out there who want you to be cowed by these ideas that we can't do this. The economics are now in favour of the solutions. Our health is in favour of the solutions. And it's just a matter of consistently telling that story, referencing it well, and trying to counter the negative stories. But honestly, that's the biggest race. The biggest race we have is with misinformation. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.